the New York Niggabockers. We out here doing the goddamn thing right now, yo. No Randall, which is sad. It sucks. You know, he was playing. He was balling hard this year. He was playing some of his most dominant basketball of his career. You know, playing like a freight train like he should have been his entire career. You know, but you know, he had his moments where he wanted to be a jump shooter. And he had moments where he was a pretty goddamn good, good jump shooter. You no, know, in the regular season. Playoffs, not as much. But coming into the, the year, he you know, made a, a conscious effort to be more of a, a a efficient player, which led him to changing his play style and turning into more of a bulldozing uh, uh, type of player that goes straight to the paint, straight to the basket, uh, uh, way more. Uh, taking more shots at the rim, and he was looking amazing, bro. Pause. And he was, uh, he was doing the damn thing, man. He was playing great, but unfortunately, that play style kind of led him to getting hurt by, you know, taking a charge, which could have happened any other year too. But um, unfortunately, it happened this year. Now, we have high hopes, especially with the the Ananobi trade. We, we were what seventeen and two. With Randall, OG, and Brunson, or at least you know, 17 and 2 with just OG in the lineup. Amazing. We, we was not just beating teams, we was smoking teams, not just any teams, but the best teams. That what we did to the, the 76ers was violation. That, that, that was one of the craziest wins I've ever seen in basketball like in all the games of basketball i've watched that was a dominant win like we were just still in a pocket change on every possession bro <laughs> it was crazy oh my goodness but uh look at bogdanovich he's, he's starting to be, play a bit better now even though he just got stripped on that play with the knicks we had a lot of injuries but now we're a lot healthier but unfortunately that comes with one caveat Randall being out for the rest of the year including the playoffs and unfortunately he's not going to be able to play in the playoffs now me I like to predict things as far as you know sports specifically basketball I'm pretty good at it in my, you know, my history and I haven't talked about the Knicks in a while because I really did not like that Burks and Bogdanovich trade I, I didn't I wanted to John St. Murray and I, my my uh, spirits was low after that. I'm not gonna front, and they were proving me right for a very long time. Bricks and Bogdanovich, they was playing like shit. All right, Bogdanovich is playing a little bit better now, thankfully, and I, I'll give him credit. I expected him to be a bit better, but man, took a goddamn while. I, I'll tell you that. But anyway, with that being said. Playoffs is here. We, we we making moves for the second seed. We just beat the Bucks. Bucks is sliding right now, man. Doc Rivers don't know what he, what he's doing up there in, in Milwaukee. He's uh he's fucking up right now. Let's keep it a bean. He's fucking up. Giannis just look he had a, a a calf injury that looked way more serious than it turned out to be. Thankfully, he's not you know injured for the year or anything like that. And plus, I like our chances. We got OG. I like our chances against anybody. All right. And the reason why I'm excited. All right. And, and to see. I've always. This entire time. Wanted to see how the Knicks would play without Randall. Not most, not only because of Randall. But also because of Tibbs. Tibbs is not going to take Randall out the lineup. Even if he plays bad. And we've seen plenty of instances where he plays bad. It shows no effort on defense. Doesn't have a go on on offense. And we all know he's. Know, always liable to be a turnover machine so those three reasons is why i think we be, might be might play a bit better without julius randall because he's pretty much the only guy on the team that does those three things well yes that does those three things where he's the only player on the team who even if he plays bad tibbs is still gonna play him him is him and josh hart <laughs> it's him and josh hart but even josh hart Gets like I, I remember him getting sat down one time for, for just not having a good game and just not having it. But it don't matter if Julius don't have it. Like Tibbs is gonna have him in the lineup. So that's one thing. Turnover machine. Okay, 
the, the other game, I think it was, I don't know if it was the Bulls game or the Bucks game. We only had five turnovers the whole game. Randall would have a, a game where he had five turnovers himself. But we don't have that anymore. We don't have a guy like Randall who just makes, uh, you know, head scratching plays where he turns the ball, ball over. Now, again, I'm not a Randall hater. All right. I'm just a, an objective Knicks fan, an objective fan who sees these things and anybody who watches the Knicks games would tell you he is a turnover prone healthy not healthy he's turnover prone that's a fact he leads the team in tur turnovers that's a fact now you have the guy who now as far as the points though we, we are there are pros and cons to anything in life there's the, definitely cons like you know we're not gonna have the points but uh, one other con of Randall's game that we're not going to have is probably my, the biggest thing to me is the lack of effort on defense at times. I don't know what happens with, with Randall, but there'd be times where, I don't know, he's a, it's he got he got a little bit of prima donna in him, all right? He, he got a little bit of prima donna in him still to this day. He's a hard worker and all that, you know, works hard in the offseason, but... I don't know the the treatment and special uh, treatment that Tibbs gives him, along with his uh, you know, slight prima donna attitude. He, he is very lackluster on defense and just in really bad times too. And it's it's insane, bro. It's really frustrating as a fan to watch. And there was even time where like a TNT game earlier this year, he was walking back on defense. And it got national attention. You had people like Charles Barkley and Kendrick Perkins talking about how why are you walking up the floor uh, when you're in the fourth quarter when your team is trying to make a comeback? Why are you walking up the floor back on defense? And that's the type of stuff that didn't just happen one time. It happened often. You, you could argue it happened at least once a game with Randall, if not more, if not way more. Uh, honestly, it happened way more than one time a game. I'm just saying, like, if that was the, the least amount of times it would happen, if it only happened one time a game, that was a good game for Randall, where he doesn't show a good effort. And we can't have those type of things in the playoffs. So those are three reasons why I think, where I think the Knicks will benefit from Randall not being in the lineup. and Or, excuse me, you know what, let me, let me scratch that. Three things that I'm looking for at with Randall at the lineup okay out the lineup three things that I'm paying attention to with Randall out the lineup is the turnovers less turnovers less lapses on defense and one less guy that Tibbs plays even if they're playing bad okay and that's what that's what Tibbs wants to do like uh you know I'll know we lose some rebounding and we lose some scoring, but the way like Tibbs' formula for winning is rebound, limit the turnovers, and take good shots. That's essentially his his, his motto. That and other things like defense and all, all that type type of shit. But no no turnovers or low turnovers is a huge uh, portion. So is defensive effort, huge portion of what Tibbs likes to do and take good shots that's also a thing that randall didn't always do is take good shots he told oh, he did a way better job this year that's why i'm a big fan of how he's been playing this year big fan so don't get it confused i'm you know say i'm i'd rather he be in the lineup but i also rather he be a person who turns the ball over less and well, for, for all that, I, I'll take the turnovers, man. With the points, you know, this, all players have pros and cons. I just my the thing that's a, a, a deal breaker for me with Randall is his effort on defense at times. Like especially when we're trying to when when it's like the fourth quarter, we're trying to win the game. He just be unexplainably just losing all interest in defense. It's like he losing all interest in winning, bro. He just quits. <laughs> And T Tibbs sees that and does nothing. Now we don't. Now we don't have that situation. Now we don't have to have Tibbs have a, a tough conversation with Randall. All right. Yeah, we got my guy Deuce. I'm Deuce Hive. Deuce McBride. 
He's putting up numbers. Oh, he was looking good. Getting to the basket. Oh, man, this guy, he needs a floater, though, bro. That That's one thing that pisses me off. He, misses, he passes up so many open shots where he has the opportunity to hit a floater. And if he hits a floater, he will be, like, fairly elite offensively in in the NBA. But he's getting close. He's, yo, he's getting there, though. With the, I think it was this game with the Bucks. He was getting to the basket, scoring, like, at, at the rim, scoring layups. He's understanding he's pick where to. He's understanding where to, he could pick his spots now to get to to the rim, get to the basket, and get those point blank layups. But he needs to increase his uh, his floater game and get more confident with that. That's what I'm looking forward to him. Because if he does, oh my god, that is gonna be huge, bro. Because that's gonna be like basically everything quickly was offensively. If he adds that floater, that's everything quickly was. He already has a pretty good mid range. So, oh man, if Deuce McBride gets a floater, it's it's really up for the league, bro. It really is. And we might need a, he might need a fucking pay raise. I know he just got a contract extension, but yeah, but man, I'm excited. We got OG Brunson. Brunson is a superstar, bro. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Help me get to my next thousand subscribers ASAP. I'm trying to get to 100,000 before the year is up. It takes a quick second to click that little red button. Doesn't mean anything to you. It means the world to me. I appreciate you for tuning in.